Juan Martinez against Jody Arias. That's coming up in this trial. Let's bring back our expert, Attorney Jeff Gold. All right, Jeff, you saw him right there. He barking at that witness. Right. Is that the way he's going to treat Jody Arias or not? I think so. I think he may start a little slower than that. I think he's going to build up to it. Let's remind the viewers, this is so dramatic because we're not used to seeing media trials like this where the defendant testifies. O.J., Michael Jackson, Sandusky, Peterson, Casey Anthony, we don't get this. In a way, when the defendant testifies, it resets the game. It's like overtime. And now the overtime where the defense has the ball. So, okay, they're going down the field, but it's then going to be his turn. And I'll tell you something, when you have a defendant testify, it really does change everything. The jury can look listen and throw everything else out. Now, I think that's unlikely here. There's a mountain of evidence against her, and I don't think her defense is going to amount to a hill of beans, and the prosecutor is going to take her apart. He is copiously taking notes. He's letting her hang herself, and he is going to go over every bit of what she said piece by piece, and we haven't even got to the important part. All this stuff is about the death penalty, if you ask me. When we get to what happened on the night of the murder, I think she's going to be much quicker in her testimony. I don't think she's going to go quite as long on that. I don't think she wants the jury to hear all that for days. Okay, what is, there's a lot there. I mean, we could probably go on a half hour talking about the strategy that Juan Martinez could employ against Jody Arias, but a little time we have. Where does he begin? I mean, is he going to, because she will end up with the night she killed him, right? And she admits to that. Is that where he starts or will Juan Martinez go back to the relationship and the sexual encounters and, and that she wasn't really used and abused and all that stuff? Where's she, where's he starting? Well, that's a matter of style and technique. There's an awful lot to cross-examination, and what you should do is try to think of it ahead, what you're trying to uh, do, and you're trying to bring, in this case, the jury back to the murder and how it's not self-defense, because in, in Arizona, once she raises this self-defense, especially by domestic violence, it then becomes the state's burden to disprove it. It's unusual. Uh, usually, it's just an affirmative defense by... Uh, by the defendant. Here, the state has to disprove it beyond a reasonable doubt. So I think he is going to start with the murder. He may go back to, you know, some of the details that happened before, but I don't think they're very important to him. I think the only thing that matters is that he keep going to the murder. Right. And I think he'll do that, veer from it, go back to it, veer from it, go back to it, and in the end, go back to it again. That's what you do. It's kind of like looping arguments, right? where you hit the murder, you, you hit some more topics, and you're back to the murder, because he's got the powerful images. I mean, uh, the picture in the courtroom, and I don't know if you saw it, I know you were in court, Jeff, of basically Travis Alexander's head practically cut off. Oh, well, that right? was, well, you know, interestingly, he did that uh, at a point uh, in the defense case that was shocking. It, the, all the, the victim's family ran out of court because they weren't given notice as they were during the state's case, where they said, oh, we're going to show some pictures, you don't have to be in court. Here, they were shocked to see he did it for effect, um, and it really had to do with whether or not uh, there was slashing, because the implication is Jody actually slashed uh, Travis's tires because, you know, she's a stalker. Right. Uh, uh, that didn't come out exactly that way, but that was the implication, and it was shocking. Yes, he's going to use every bit of evidence he can to show she's a liar and a murderer, and when you're dealing with a liar and a murderer, there is no reason to put gloves on. Wow. That's my point of view. There you go. And, and, and you mentioned the titles. The prosecution wants Jody Arias perceived as liar, mur liar, murderer. The defense wants Traffic Alexander seen as sexual deviant, hypocrite. When Jeff comes back, along with Joey Jackson, we're going to talk about the backdrop of the Mormon faith, because the defense has laid it out there. He's there to give the Book of Mormon to Jody Arias, yet he wants... Does he basically say, come on, Jody Arias, this isn't your, uh, uh, your first time. You, you like sex just like he does. Well, two things. I just want to comment on one thing about this law, the, the Mormon law. There was another witness that testified, uh, Lisa Didone, Lisa Anders Didone, now Didone, and she testified that as a Mormon, she was very upset with him because she was his uh, Travis's girlfriend, and he got an erection when they were kissing. Hey, that's a very different interpretation of the law than Travis had, which is not just you got an erection when you were kissing, but he goes so far as to say, you know, oral sex is okay, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now, in terms of what uh, the prosecutor is going to do, he is going to take all the pieces of what she just said, which add up to motive. The motive, he treated you like crap, and you wanted revenge. You bottled it up, and over time, you exploded. That's what he's going to do, and he can use these words. He's writing down every time she says something that could add up to motive, 
boom, and he's going to hit her with it. All right. Jeff Joey, great job.